Hey guys, welcome to the ninth episode of DevOps for Developers. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at Upstart, but before we can do that, we have to actually push our application from development into production server. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a Git repository, um, just like how we did with CloudScribe, the static, the static page, and we're going to be able to push our Rails app up into the production server. So I'm going to create a new directory, mkdir, and do a checkin.git. Looks good. And then we're going to cd into that and do checkin.git. And here we're going to do git init hyphen bear. Looks good. All right. So now we have the hooks folder. We're going to go in there. And we're going to create a file called post receive, if you remember from our git deployment episode. So I'm going to do sudo. Actually, we don't need to do sudo at all. We can just do vi post, post receive. It's good. And here, we're just going to paste in the, the same kind of code that we have from the previous repository. And we're just going to deploy, uh, change the git work tree directory. So here, we're going to change it to checkin.me, which looks good. All right, so once we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and exit. I'm just going to go and quickly check actually before that we need to make sure that our post receive has executable uh, permission. So I'm going to do chmod plus x uh, post receive. All right, screen looks good. All right, I think we're done from here. So I'm just going to quickly exit out and cd into our uh, app directory. So we have a checkin.me right there, cd into that. It's an empty directory, hopefully, yep. So there's nothing in there. So now we have to exit out into our local environment, right, instead of being on the server. And I'm going to go into our cd shop, uh, repository. This is where I keep all my stuff. So this is where our uh, Rails app is located. So if I do a Rails S, um, you know, I can do a localhost 3000. So wait. I can boot up my app and uh, it's running. It should run at least. Yep. So we can do a reload real quick. It runs. So this is the app. You know, it's working great. So now we need to basically get this source code up into our production server before we can mess around with um, with upstart. So what do we do? So well, what we can do is we can do git um, remote add production and we can do deployer at and our IP address for our server, which is this one here. I'm just going to copy that, paste that there and do a check in dot git just like that. And if I do a git remote hyphen V, we have now two. We have the origin where the where it lives on GitHub and we have the production server, right? So I'm gonna do a quick git push. So git push production develop master. Uh, why are we doing develop colon master? Because on the server, we want it to be the master branch, but we wanna push the develop branch on the local um, environment up into the, the the master we can actually just do master as well so let's uh, get check out so first get branch get check out master you should always deploy master to production but you know I'm, I'm used to like having a staging environment but anyway we can just use a master so just do a git push uh, production master and let's see what happens all right there it goes Cool. So that worked flawlessly. Amazing. All right. So now let's go back into our server. So SSH deployer at and then our, uh, our IP address here. So I'm going to CD into my OPT slash www and check in dot me. So we should have the application right there. Uh, as you can see, it's here. Uh, all the configure everything basically from our app is now living in our production server as well. Um, so if you remember correctly, we configured our database with 
something uh, we created the database so in this case first we need to configure our database so let's do a cd config and we basically we don't want to use um, database.yaml from our development environment so what we do is we actually ignore database yaml so what you have to do is to make it work we need to copy uh, database.yaml.example so copy into database.yaml so this gives us a starting point and once we have that basically we can just use a vi to modify our database file so i'm going to delete all of this stuff we just need one uh, the production environment so delete that looks good so i'm going to go into there um, and i'm going to put in the password Okay, so I don't actually remember the password that I used, and I think I forgot to mirror myself that, that example password. But hopefully you guys haven't done that. Um, so I'm going to quickly do a sudo hyphen u postgres psql. And uh, I'm going to do alter user deployer with password. And I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, not secure, but good enough for, you know, demonstration purposes. All right, I'm going to quit, go back into our config. Okay, so here we're going to put in the password. All right, looks good. So save that out. And basically, we have now configured our database. Um, so we can test that. Uh, if, if you remember last time, we also installed Ruby, so we can actually test our database out. Um, before we do that, I just want to make sure that, that our VM, our virtual machine, is configured with the right environment variables. Um, so basically, a Rails app reads uh, basically these two um, variables to figure out what kind of uh, environment they should be running in whether it's development or production or staging or testing um so how do we test that so we can do an echo and then r-a-c-k-e-n-v like that if it's empty it means it hasn't been configured or now we do rails env so both of these have not been configured and we need to do go ahead and configure them so if we go ahead and cd um etsy environment actually etsy back actually we just start the vi so sudo vi etsy environment so this is the global uh, environment variable uh so we can set this here uh export since this whole vm is going to be used for production purposes we can configure these kind of variables here so rack env equals production export rails env production okay looks good um before we are able to use anything that we've installed with rbnv we need to make sure that our uh, rbnv path is you know the the binaries that come with rbnv so if we do ec cd into usr local and rbnv shims so all the commands the ruby commands that you run are from this uh, particular folder so we need to have this in our path in order to get it to work correctly and the other one is the rbnv bin so these executables should be available globally right so that's that's where we we have to go and configure it in the environment file so i'm just going to do a sudo vi etsy and environment so here i'm going to put in usr whoops slash usr slash local slash rbnv so the shims so basically any kind of gem that we install uh, later on, i'm going to install unicorn that needs to be able to ex we need to be able to execute that 
uh, from the command line anywhere, uh, especially upstart needs to be able to do that. So the right way to do it, I guess, would be in here. Um, USR local slash RBNV slash bin. All right, so that looks good. That seems like we have everything set up. That should work. Okay, so now um, a few things we need to do. So once we've configured all that, if I now go into uh, the, the app directory, so Uh, if I now do a echo, it's probably not going to work just yet because that file has just been updated, but it hasn't been run. Like we need to execute that that environment file to make it read the uh, the variables that we put in. Just double checking if, it, if it's all good, if I've got anything. Okay, um, so to execute that, we need to do a dot etc environment. So now if we do an echo and rack env, it should say, okay, wait, there was a typo there. So it should say production like that. Um, so basically, Rails is going to be able to read that. It's going to know that it needs to do the production, uh, use the production environment settings for everything in order to get it to work correctly. Um, so now let's try connecting to our database. So let's go and do a rake db create. Okay, so cannot load such file bundler setup, probably because we haven't installed bundler as a gem. So let's go into the gem install bundler. All right, so the gem is now installed. We need to do rbnv rehash. Um, before we can run any rake db commands, we need to be able to ensure that you know all the gems that are required from this application is installed. So let's go ahead and do a bundle install for the app. And this will basically install all the gems you need. You know, it's gonna make sure that the app has all the dependencies and whatever, you know, in order to 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 make it run correctly. So it might take a while on the first install. So we're just gonna pause the video and we'll be right back. So oh, um, my installation ran into a bit of an error. Uh, no code Geary could not find libxml2. So that's very easy to solve. Um, all we need to do is install libxml2-dev. So sudo apt-get install libxml2-dev-y. And that should basically do it. All right, we'll just let it install. OK, done. So we're going to do another bundle install. So if, if you guys run into any issue, any error, uh, don't worry. I mean, it's these things are pretty easy to solve. You just need to basically, you know, install whatever it is that's missing from your system to get it to work. Um, read the errors. You know, don't panic. Most people who I see, who I teach, install this stuff, they panic. They say, oh, there's an error. The world has ended. But it's not. You know, I mean, stuff happens. You know, you missed. You forgot to install this and you forgot to install that. It's not a big deal. Just Google it, you know, copy this and, you know, just go ahead and Google it. You'll find whatever it is missing. Here we go, another one. So libxslt, all right, fine. Um, let's install it. libxslst dev, right? There you go. And do a bundle install. Yeah, Mr. Noko Geary here is pretty demanding. So, you know, it's it's a spoiler brat. Let's see. Seems to have passed. So yeah, that's I mean, that's pretty much it on dependencies. You know, if your stuff's if your server's missing whatever it needs, just go ahead and install it and it should work just fine.
Okay, so we ran into another issue. Um, it says can install our magic, probably because I need to install image magic to get it to work. So let's go ahead and do sudo app get install image magic. So for you, for those of you who don't know, image magic is used for, it's like a command line tool where you can manipulate photos, resize images, put on watermark. Um, you could say it's kind of like Photoshop filters, but you know, through the command line instead of having a nice GUI. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all it is. So yeah, go ahead and install that if you have any of those issues. All image magic, so let's do another bundle install okay So I don't know what's going on here. I install image magic and it should have worked, but I'm just going to go and Google that. I'm sure it'll come up with some solution right there. Look at that. Okay. So it seems like I need this lib magic wand as well. Um, yeah. So go ahead and install that. Wow. Many packages. I should switch that to mini magic rather than R magic. R magic is pretty memory intensive anyway, but that's a, on a whole side note. I don't want to go off on that tangent anyways. Um, so we're back on track. We're installing our missing packages. And again, bundle install. So every app has different kind of dependencies. You know, it depends on what kind of gems you're using. Some gems are more demanding than other others. So, you know, you just got to kind of play it by ear. You got to look at what it needs. You know, if, if it can't find a package on your server, it's going to tell you. So just, you know, just find out what it is that it needs and just go ahead and install it. Most of the time, it's a few commands and you know, you're, you'll be good to go. There it is. It just passed. So now we're installing our spec looking good. And uh, we'll, we'll resume this, uh, once it's done. So the bundle is complete. Um, so we should not have any issues anymore, uh, installing our, our app. And, uh, we will wrap this up for this video, uh, just because, you know, there's, uh, it's, it's already getting a little bit long. And uh, now in this episode, all I wanted to do was basically, you know, get our application uh, up into production environment and configure all the environment stuff that, that we need to, to get configured in order to get everything working correctly. And in the next video, we're going to be uh, writing our upstart script.